Good morning, Year 7. Um, glad you can join us today. Today is your very special science um, day, today and tomorrow, in fact. We're going to do a little bit of different kind of learning because nationally this is Science Week. So, today everything is going to be about science. All right, you're going to be doing lots of different activities and not just with your familiar faces from science, you're going to see some people from the local Prospects Foundation based in our own town in Accrington. You'll meet Sophie and Emma from Action from Conservation and they'll be setting you different projects to do um, and we'll be looking for um, some courses for you to do which we'll explain. So I hope you're all ready, I hope you've got your thinking caps on um, and you've got your minds open to see what's around you this week. So, Mr. Foy, what is Science Week all about? Um, well, this Science Week is all about innovation and it's thinking outside the box. And as scientists, I think that's something that we're really good at, actually. So, what kind of problems do we need to think about? Well, I think we need to be thinking about the problems that are in the news at the minute. I mean, there's things about um, discovering drugs, looking at vaccines, and we're looking currently at the climate and any issues surrounding those, cleaning the oceans. There's so many issues in science at the minute that we need to be thinking about. And this, this week is all about that innovation and it's that thinking outside the box and that's what we're going to be doing this week. Why, hi, hello again, Year 7. Just to remind you really what we did, we did uh, a piece of homework together about counting the little birds in our garden, biodiversity, looking at the whole spectrum of using the way we had um, autumn watch on and now we're looking forward to doing spring watch as well. So yes, some of you went and told me about the big birds such as the pigeons and the magpies and so on, but we really need to think about those smaller birds and how they are able to survive. So this is what this week's about. I want a little bit more effort where you go and spend that time out in the garden for a good hour. Even if you go out for a walk, it'll be fantastic to see the amount of small birds and if you can, to classify them. If you use some sort of little guide and key, that will be great. Thank you. So, Mrs Lilland, you're responsible for a lot of the eco and sustainability at school. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why it's so important that we should care about our planet Absolutely. Well, you most of you, yes, yeah, seven, have certainly been down to the Politan at some point, and you know that I quite like the idea of growing our own food, and that's something we'll be doing in this next spring term, hopefully. And the reason we need to grow our own food is because there's so many people on the planet, and there's more people on the planet, there's more of a um, strain on resources. So the resources can be, food is one of them. Of course, when we have more people, we create more waste, and more waste, and we're going to get rid of that, that's a bit of a problem. Um, but one of the main things is the energy. Now, I know it's getting a little bit warmer now, but it's been quite cold in school and at home and you've been doing your lessons. And we need energy and fuels to keep our houses warm, for our electricity, um, for the computers to run. And the more people we have, the more pressure there is on those resources. And the most important thing is these resources are finite. They're running out. All right, so we're going to need to look for some options. We need you to be innovative um, designers and thinkers and scientists to solve these problems because it's not just our generation, it's your generation for um, the next coming years who will really feel this. Okay, so we need your thinking caps on for this. So let's listen to a few different teachers now about why we should bother um, looking after our planet. Just linking in from what Mrs Liveland was saying there, uh, our purpose in science starts with the phrase, God is in everything, which makes everything worthy of our investigation. And it's really important that we go forward as stewards of this planet. And science is something that links everybody throughout the world. And it's the glue that holds people together. And it brings people from different cultures, from different countries, from different backgrounds, all together striving forward for one goal. And that's just to make the world a better place. So science is a great force for good in the world and that's hopefully what we're going to be investigating this week. So biodiversity is currently reducing. Now what does that mean? Well it means that the number of species that exist on our planet is decreasing because many of them are becoming extinct. So why is it a problem that biodiversity is decreasing? Well many of our drugs 
um, and medicines that we know today are sourced from plants and microorganisms. And if we start to run out of those, then that will be a real problem. Um, we also, many of the things that you look at around your house are originating from plants, microorganisms, animals. So if you were to think about this, um, without insects, we wouldn't have pollination and we wouldn't be able to produce um, many of our foods. Um, we also, if we had a lack of trees, we'd have a lack of habitats for all, lots of other organisms as well. And so throughout this day, um, we are going to look at some of the problems with biodiversity and how we may help to preserve um, some species that we may need to use in the future. So waste is a massive problem and you know that. What we need to be doing is thinking about the planet as Mrs Litherland and Mrs Dan said before, we have to think about the planet for future generations and to be just throwing it away and not thinking about it is a really awful way to be. So we now need to look at how do we get rid of these plastics? Well, we know that they won't biodegrade. We do have lots and lots of our supermarkets now that have cut down on the plastics, not giving plastic bags anymore. But if you look at David Attenborough and you look at many advertisements on TV, we can see the plastic straws along beaches, along roads and our seas, how it affects all our animals when it gets into the food chain. It's a dreadful, dreadful way to be. So we need to think how you can be really on the ball and think of how we can help our future generations not to use these plastics. We're already using paper, we're using it in school, we're trying to be sustainable by using cardboard, we're not using plastic straws, hopefully anymore. So if you can contribute to that and think about ways in which we can reduce this, fabulous for this week. So, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about weather now. You might think, what's weather got to do with what we're discussing today, but you may start to ask yourself, what we are doing as a society, is that impacting our weather? Well, maybe. If you look currently at the weather we've been experiencing over Christmas, over summer last year, we experienced heat waves galore, and it was, it was wonderful. But actually, is that having a detrimental effect on our planet and the species that live there? So when Mrs. Dow talked about habitats, are habitats starting to be changed? Will, will infectious diseases begin to creep into the UK that never have done before due to these increased temperatures? Things like malaria, questions like that are really important for a scientist to be answering. So things like cyclones, global um, temperatures rising, causing um, the cyclones, causing the global uh, the ice caps to melt and therefore rising uh, uh, sea, sea levels. There's lots of things that we are doing to this planet that is maybe causing these extreme weathers. And the question is, how do we solve them? And that's what, again, we're going to be looking at this week. Right, one of the topics we're going to talk about is um, what you actually need and what you actually want. So now often what I want is not what I need. Do you understand that? Now, it's why I quite fancy a new dress. But do I need a new dress? Because this one's just perfectly fine for now. All right, it's getting the idea of what we need to do for the future. Sometimes having lots of something is not such a good idea. Even when it comes to things like food. If you take food and you eat it, that's great. But if you take food, be it from the supermarket, be it given to you, be it a treat, and you waste it. I don't know how many times I've seen in the school bins full sandwiches wrapped up. Someone's mum or dad or grandparent has made these for you. They've bought the bread. And if it's an animal, the animal's been killed for you to eat and you've thrown it in the bin. Is that a good way to provide things? Possibly not. All right, we're gonna start thinking and challenging some of our ideas that now, what we do. Is it actually, we could just do one small thing, we could change things. So, together with Action for Conservation and the Prospects Foundations and all your teachers here at St Christopher's, we're gonna try and work together to make things a little bit better. Now don't worry, we're not gonna ask you to do massive things. We're not gonna ask you to walk 12 miles to school from Wednesday. All right, we're going to ask you to do a little thing and you're going to design this. You're going to try and solve the problems. And to be honest, the problems that my generation, my parents, my grandparents, your great-great-grandparents have done, 
all the problems we've made in the earth, right? Because if we don't solve it quite quickly, your future's not going to look as good as what we've had, right? We already know this. So there's a lot of good chance here. There's a chance for innovation. There's a chance for excitement. There's a chance for a better future, all right? And together, we can definitely do this. Okay, so this is going to be the last time you see us today because you're going to be involved in lots of different activities. Some of these will be you finding things out. I'm hoping you're going to come and tell us things. There's going to be things we don't know, all right? We're not bad as science teachers, but I tell you what, we certainly don't know everything. And sometimes young people are the best teachers as well. You can tell us some things. So at the end of these two days, we're going to be looking for a few things. Now, year seven are going to be able to do some science at home activities. You're going to do some little experiments. Now, you could film them, you could take photos of them, you could tell us as your teacher what you've done. It's up to you, whatever you can do at home. We're looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday to talk about it as well. Okay, so those are fun things you can do. But everybody, you're all going to do a poster on innovation. What you do and what your friend does, I'm hoping is going to be different because that's the whole point of innovation. Hopefully, we'll have inspired you over the last two days to have some innovative ideas of what the future might hold. These are your ideas, they're not my ideas, and certainly not the school's ideas. And we're going to enter you in a national competition for this, for Science Week. We'll send you some information about what to do. So we want one A4 poster with as much information on as possible. We'd like your name on there, um, your age, and writing St. Christopher's, and bring that with you on Wednesday. We'll be really excited to see that. Okay, you can perhaps show your form tutors and any of the other teachers as you go along, because they'll have missed you for the last couple of lessons. Okay, right, main thing today, have fun, think and be creative. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.